So we're going to have in our flowchart, we're going to usually start with the word start. And that is in our oval. All right, so then variables now. Um, so we need to create the variables and we need to initialize them. So to initialize all the variables, you need a rectangle. So we're going to put B count, R count. Okay, right. So the reason I put this in a rectangle is because um, this is initializing all the variables. All right, so you can't represent a for loop. So in order to represent a for loop, you have to, you have to change it to a while. In a flowchart, what you're really trying to do is ask a question. So you're going to say C less than or equal to 100. And the options are always going to be yes or no. So if the answer is no, more than likely you're going to do the last thing of your program. So always kind of remember, once the loop is finished, put the no going down that way because it will make your life a little easier. If the answer is yes, however, you put the yes going to the right hand side because you'll have more space on your right hand side to work with. So you have the yes, and then the yes is going to now um, do the things that you said to do in the program, which will be print welcome and then print please enter. So now that we've gone through the yes and no, we now have, or don't forget to put the arrowheads. If you don't have the arrowheads, I think you'll lose marks in our flowchart, but long story short, I ain't too sure. So after that, we have to now read V. So I'm going to put the um, parallelogram, because a parallelogram is what I used to read. And then after I read the V, I'm going to have to now make a set of choices. Now the choices are going to have to be represented by diamonds. So the first diamond is going to be if V is equal to 1, question mark. If the answer is yes, B count equal to B count plus 1. And then if the answer is no, then I'll just kind of join back here because obviously it wasn't equal to 1. Then I'm going to have a next diamond, which is if V is equal to 2. If V is equal to 2, yes, R count, go to R count plus 1. And then if that doesn't work out, then I'll have the no, and that's going to match back to there. Then I have a next diamond, which is my third choice in this particular program. V is equal to 3, right? That's a question mark, by the way. If the answer is yes, O count is equal to O count plus 1. And then uh, this one will be no, right? Good. So after all that is done, so what I want to do is I want to get, find a way to come back up here and check if the number is actually less than 1 or not. Because remember, the C counting all the way up. What happens is this has to loop up all the way here and check to see if the um, count is less than 100. But I have to represent line 36 somewhere in order for it to know that the count went up. Or else the count will never know that it went up. So what I have to do is I have to put C is equal to C plus 1 here. And that represents the actual loop taking place. The next thing I have to represent is what needs to take place if the loop is finished, which is all the prints. And the prints are represented in parallelograms. And that there is the flowchart for this algorithm. Mm -hmm.